Even with the Supreme Court of India on a summer break, it's been a newsy week for courts across India on a diverse spectrum of topics. With the high courts going on break starting next week, important developments have occurred in some crucial cases this week. The Allahabad High Court has passed a detailed verdict on the maintainability of the Gyanwapi suit. The Karnataka High Court has called for a law against necrophilia and even the national capital witnessed developments regarding the wrestlers protest and the withdrawal of the 2000 rupee note by the RBI. Let's take a look at all that happened in the world of law during the past week. copy of the order of the Allahabad High Court, which had dismissed the plea by the Muslim parties in the Gyanwapi Mosque dispute, challenging the maintainability of the suit, has now been released by the High Court. In the detailed order released on the 1st of June, the court has said that the Hindus are only seeking their right to worship and no attempts have been made to change the religious character of the Gyanwapi Mosque itself. The court also noted that the lawsuit is limited to the right to worship of the Hindu parties and there is no attempt made seeking to convert the religious character of the Gyanwapi Mosque into a Hindu temple and therefore the suit cannot be barred by the Places of Worship Act 1991. The court has also said that the Hindus were not only asking for any new right to be given to them, rather they were seeking an enforcement of the right that they already had. If Hindu devotees offering prayers at the Gyanwapi Mosque once a year did not change the character of the place, how will doing it daily or weekly lead to that? The Allahabad High Court asked. Finally, the court said that the five Hindu devotees who had approached the court were asking for their individual right to worship and not a community right. With the High Court now paving the way, we can expect the case to be heard on merits by the Varanasi local court and hopefully be expedited at the earliest. The Law Commission of India, headed by retired Justice Rituraj Avasthi, in its latest report, has said that Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code dealing with the law of sedition should be retained with some amendments regarding circumstances under which it should be used. In its report, which was submitted to the Law Ministry, the Commission has said that certain guidelines may be framed by the Centre to curb the misuse of the sedition law. The Commission also said that mere allegations of misuse of Section 124A cannot call for its repeal. The Law Commission of India has listed several reasons for why the law of sedition needs to remain. The main reason cited by the Law Commission is the need to protect the unity and integrity of India. The Commission, headed by retired Justice Ritu Rajavasti, says that freedom can be ensured to citizens only when integrity of the nation is secured first. The Commission also made certain recommendations to curb the misuse of the law, including altering the definition of sedition itself to now include a tendency to incite violence or public disorder and also altering the punishment from three years to seven years. In a disturbing development, the Karnataka High Court in a recent order said that it has come to their notice that hospital attendants outside mortuaries in government and private hospitals are engaging in sexual intercourse with the dead bodies of young women in the mortuaries. While hearing a case for murder and necrophilia, the Karnataka High Court division bench said that it's high time that the centre comes with a law criminalising necrophilia in the country and directed the state government to install CCTVs in all mortuaries in the state. Six months time has been given to the state government to make sure that the directions are followed. The man who had come before the Karnataka High Court was acquitted of rape even though he was convicted of murder because the High Court said that he had had sex with the corpse of the woman and not before he killed her. Since the woman was already dead at the time when the sexual intercourse was conducted, it cannot be said to be rape. The High Court ruled. The Delhi High Court has asked for a response from the Registrar of the High Court and the Delhi Government to determine which court will hear a plea for a court-monitored probe 
into a minor wrestler's sexual harassment allegations against Wrestling Federation of India President Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh. Appearing for the minor wrestler, senior advocate Narendra Hudda submitted before a single judge bench of Justice Dinesh Kumar Sharma that one of the complaint has been moved on behalf of the minor wrestler. In fact, what has happened is that the Rouse Avenue Court is the MP MLA Court and the Poxo Court is in Patiala House. There is no one court which deals with the MP MLA cases as well as Poxo matters, which is why the matter has now come to the Delhi High Court and it will be the Delhi High Court that will decide which court should finally hear the allegations by the wrestlers against the WFI chief, whether it should be the MP MLA court in the Rouse Avenue premises or the Poxo court in Patiala House. That's all the updates that we have this week. Keep watching Court Watch next week for further updates about what's happening in the world of law.